Hi, welcome to His Healing Wings. This is Barbara Gyro, and I'm so glad you could join me today. Being that this is the very first airing of this program, I would like to take a little time today to share with you a little bit about myself. To do that, I need to take you back about 34 years ago to a 30, Thursday morning on April the 17th, 1980. Uh, and this very special event took place that morning that forever changed me and changed my life. That was the day that Jesus Christ came into my heart as my Savior. That was the day that I asked Him to come into my heart, that I repented of my sins and that I put my faith and trust in Him uh, as my Savior and what He did for me on the cross. And He came into my heart that morning and He forever changed my life. You know, I will never forget that day as long as I live. It's still fresh in my, uh, the memory uh, of it is still fresh in my heart and in my mind. I've, I've relived that day so many times since I've been saved. And, and I tell you, when I do, all I can do is thank and praise God for what He did for me that day. You know, right before that day, the Lord had, had been stirring in my heart dealing with my heart and I remember uh, I found myself wanting to read the Bible so I went out and I bought a Bible and brought it home and I began to read the Bible in fact I, I loved to watch TV every night and it seemed like, almost like it was the same time it would hit me going to back and read your Bible I went back there and I started reading my Bible I began the book of Genesis I read it all the way through the book of Revelation. As I read it, the Lord began to show me that I was lost, that I was a sinner. He didn't show me anything else. He didn't show me these big revelations about the book of Revelation or anything else that people are so curious about. He just began to show me things about myself, that I was lost, that I needed a Savior, that I needed Him. I needed His forgiveness. He showed me that I, I needed to put my faith and trust in His Son and what He did for me on the cross. You know, the Bible says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever would believe in Him would not perish but have everlasting life. And God so just began to deal with my heart that way as I read the Bible. And um, he, um, I remember... Um, well, back up to this scripture, speaking of uh, convicting me of my own sins, one of the scriptures was in Romans 3.23, that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. You see, he was showing me that I was a sinner and that I needed him as my savior. And the Bible says also in uh, Romans 10.13, that if we call on the name of the Lord, we shall be saved. And you know what? I didn't just call on his name. I mean, I remember sitting in that church service that morning, hearing uh, the minister uh, preach the word of God, you know, uh, sharing of the gospel. And, and as he did, the Holy Spirit was still just dealing in my heart, stirring around in my heart. And before I knew it, I started crying and bawling like a baby. You see, he'd been dealing with me through the Word and showing me all these things about myself and my lostness. And I could not wait that morning till the altar call so I could go up there and give my heart and life to the Lord. And that's exactly what I did. When the service was over, I made a beeline to the front and I asked Jesus Christ to forgive me of my sins and to come into my heart that morning. And you know, I remember something else that happened that morning. Uh, the moment that I asked Jesus in my heart as my Savior, and He came in just like that. Once I repented and said, Lord, come in my heart, He came in, forgave me of my sins, and immediately I felt this tremendous heavy weight lift off of, of me. It, was, it felt almost like it was coming off my chest. It wasn't just a spiritual thing. It, I literally felt this weight coming off of my chest. And 
it's like um, just think about the heaviest thing that you have ever carried in, in, in your life the heaviest thing you have ever carried, maybe even the heaviest thing that you even, was so heavy that you just tried to drag it around, but it was so heavy that when you let go of that heavy thing, whatever it was, then all of a sudden you just felt this release. You felt like whew, that weight was gone and you just felt this freedom from that thing that you'd been heavy thing you've been carrying around and that's what I felt that morning only it was a spiritual thing and that heavy thing that lifted off of me was the Lord Jesus Christ lifting the burden of that sin off of my heart that morning and in in the place of that terrible burden came in me um, it was like a, 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 this wonderful release and freedom that I felt in, in my being, in my heart. It was this wonderful peace that came in. It was the peace of God. You know, the Bible says the peace of God passes all understanding. And that His peace came into my heart. Uh, and and uh, such a freedom that I felt. And then His joy came in. I remember for a while I, I would go around and, and all of a sudden I was just so blessed and so happy that the Lord saved me. I'd just start giggling. It was the funniest thing. It was just the joy of the Lord welling up in my heart because I was so grateful for what the Lord did to me for me that day. The Bible says in Matthew 11:28, in fact, this is our Lord talking. He said, "Come to me, all you who labor." The when he talks about laboring, he's talking about those who are doing uh, religious works, uh, trying to do this and that to try to get right with God. You know, there's a lot of well-meaning, sincere people uh, in this world that really do, and they're lost, but they really want to know God. And so they're, they're trying to work at it, you know, uh, the, the doctrines, the traditions of their church, doing the good works, doing this and doing that, hoping to get right with God, hoping that somehow he'll see their good works and accept him into heaven. But I'm telling you, that won't get you into heaven or get me into heaven. Because Jesus said, if you're laboring like that, he said, and you're heavy burden, the burden here he's speaking of is that burden of sin. You see, sin is a, is a burden. It is a heavy weight that bears on the soul of man. And in, until God begins to reveal that to you, the sin of your own heart, people just really don't know it. I'm so thankful to God that He did that work in me and brought me to that place. When I did, as He's saying here in this verse, all you who labor are heavy laden with sin, come to me and I will give you rest. What kind of rest? He'll give you rest from your religious, um, your religious works, all that you do to try to get right with Him. He'll give you rest from the weight and the burden of your sin. He will give you rest from the shame and the fear of the consequences of sin. And He will give you His peace, a peace and a tranquility in the heart that you just, it, it's beyond your imagination, even as the scripture tell, uh, tells us. And that's exactly what I did that morning. I came to the Lord. I repented. He lifted all the, the heavy burden of sin off my heart, and He gave me His peace and His rest. That day, Jesus radically changed me, and He changed my life. I came to know about Him personally. I'd heard about Him all my life. I've gone to church off and on all my life. I heard the priests, the, the ministers talk about this Jesus. He died on the cross, you know, and I learned things as a child going to Sunday school. And I had some head knowledge, but I didn't have a heart knowledge of the Lord. And that morning, that glorious morning, Jesus came in and He saved my soul. And I came to know that He was real. God is real. He's a real person. And He loves you and He loves me. And I've not been the same since the Lord got a hold of my heart that morning and he made me into a new creation. 2 Corinthians 5:17 says, 
therefore, if any man is in Christ, being in Christ means you have accepted his uh, son and his death on the cross for your sins, and you are then in Christ. If any man is in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. It's like it's a, a spiritual metamorphosis, like the caterpillar who weaves uh, a cocoon all around himself and shuts himself in. And for that period of time, and I don't remember what that is, but for that period of time, a transformation is taking place in that cocoon. And when the day comes, you'll see where that cocoon begins to crack open and that butterfly in there is making its way out and he just breaks free and you've got this beautiful butterfly just going off into a new life and flying away you know that's what the lord did to me that this morning i had a spiritual metamorphosis jesus came into my heart and my life he transformed me he gave me eternal life and he gave me a new beginning in this life and you know after the lord saved me i just fell madly in love with the lord i wanted to be with him all the time i wanted to read the word of god all the time i couldn't get enough of god i couldn't get enough of his word i remember i'd drive around in the car i had a bible i, uh, I, I kept in my car and right there right where i was sit, sitting uh, uh i was at the you know driving so i had my bible right there i'd hit a red light i'd get that bible out and i'd start reading until that light changed. I mean, I couldn't get enough of God, and, and I just loved Him, and, and, and then I also wanted to serve the Lord. You know, I found that desire in my heart. I wanted to, to begin to share with the other people what He did in my heart and my life. I wanted to, be, to minister to people the gospel and, and God's word. It was a desire that I had in my heart. And, he, and the Lord began to use me one-on-one. -on -one. And then he began to use me in groups and Bible studies and, and just in different areas. Of, um, he would use me. And then some years later, I attended Bible College, Minister's Training Institute in Baker, Louisiana. I graduated in 1989, and, and all of these years, since 1980, I've just been loving Jesus and, and just serving Him, and you know what? That was all made possible because of what Jesus Christ did on the cross for me. It was all made possible because on that Thursday morning, Jesus Christ saved me. He saved my soul, and He turned my whole life around, gave me a brand new life. And uh, I came to know the one that I'd heard about all those years. I came to know him personally. The Bible tells us in Romans 5, 8, but God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. You just think about that. It's, it's hard for the mind to fathom how someone could go and give themselves up to death because they love somebody else we were sinners living in sin God knew that before the foundation world that man would sin and he determined beforehand before anything was ever existed he was going to send his son Jesus Christ to die for sinners who didn't know him didn't care anything about him just living their own thing in their own life but he loved us so much he determined to send his son to die for sinners. What does a sinner do? A sinner sins. A sinner isn't uh, a sinner because he sins, or she, but a sinner sins because they're a sinner. You see, it's, it's in our spiritual DNA. We, all human beings, were born with the nature of sin. The reason for that is, you've got to go back to the Garden of Eden. When God created the heavens and the earth, He created the earth and He put a beautiful garden there called the Garden of Eden. In there, He placed man and eventually Eve. He placed them there to live and to fellowship with Him uh, forever is the way He intended it to be. But He had these beautiful trees, uh, luscious fruit trees He put in the garden. We don't know what that was, but you know it had to be good. This is for a man was uh, eating meat. And he put these trees in the garden. And he told them, you can eat of any tree in the garden, except for one, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. 
He said, of that one, if you eat of that, in the day that you eat of it, you will surely die. He was speaking of spiritual death, separation from God forever and ever in hell. And they partook of that. Now, you, uh, Genesis uh, chapters 1 through 3, you can read the account of the creation, the Garden of Eden, and Adam and Eve uh, when God made them, and then their fall. But, you know, someone would think, well, you know what? If God wouldn't have put that there, they wouldn't have sinned. They wouldn't have been tempted to sin if God... And then you may have heard people say that silly things like that before. You know, like blaming God. He shouldn't have put it there. Then nothing would have happened. We'd still be, everyone would be living today. No one would be dying or anything else bad going on. You know, it'd be really cool right now. But you know what? God didn't want robots. God put that tree there for a reason. God created man with a will to choose. And he wanted to give man... Adam and Eve and, and all mankind after them, the choice to serve Him, to accept Him and serve Him and love Him. They wanted, He wanted them to choose to do that. And you know the story, if you've read it, Adam and Eve chose to eat of what was forbidden by God. They chose uh, their own way, their own will, and they chose to sin against God. And because of that, God had to sin. He determined. He didn't have to, but he determined to do that because of his great love that he had for people. Romans uh, 5.12 says, Therefore, as just by one man, Adam, speaking of Adam, sin entered into the world and death through sin. Thus death spread to all men because all have sinned. Jeremiah 17.9, uh, the word says that the heart is deceitful above all things, desperately wicked. Who can know it? Uh, Psalms 58.3 said the wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as they are born, speaking lies. You know, this is talking about children. Children, babies are born with a sin nature. And you know, children are not accountable for their sins until they get to the age where they understand right and wrong. And when the child reaches that uh, age when they are accountable they know what is right and they know what is wrong you know mom dad tells them this is wrong that's wrong we're to teach our children right this is wrong that's wrong you do this you don't do that but the minute that child comes to the age where they understand what's right and what's wrong and then they choose to do what is wrong then they are at the age of accountability and they are accountable to God for their own sins so every one of us, every human being is born with the nature of sin. Uh, because of God's great love while we were still sinners, God sent Jesus to die for us. The word says in Romans 6.23, For the wages, the payment of sin is death, eternal separation from God in hell forever. Speaking of spiritual death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Did you know that hell is a very real place? You know, uh, God, uh, Matthew 25, 41, the Lord re Jesus refers to His everlasting fire. It's a place of torment. It's a place of judgment. Uh, it, it's a place of literal fire. It is a horrible place. Some I've heard it said that He spoke more of hell, Jesus did, than He did of heaven. He said it's a place prepared for the devil and his angels. In eternity past, Lucifer who uh, was uh, probably the highest ranking angel God had created, worshiped around the throne, uh, rebelled against God. And he talked uh, other angels into following him in his rebellion, trying to usurp the throne of God, and he fell. God had to have a place to put, Lucifer became Satan. He had to have a place to put him and the fallen angels uh, one day. Some are there now, but not all, but one day. So he created hell for the devil and his angels. He never intended for man to go to hell, but he created it for the devil and his angel. God wanted man to be with him forever, but because Adam and Eve made the wrong choice, then uh, all mankind is born in this world with the nature of sin. 
tainted with sin. And those who die rejecting Jesus Christ as their Savior, God now sends mankind to hell to suffer for all eternity, not just because of sins, but because they rejected Jesus Christ as their Savior. But thank God uh, the Lord sent Jesus to die for our sins. John 3.16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Our Savior further says in John 17.3, This is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. This is speaking of a personal relationship with God the Father in heaven, with Jesus Christ, His Son, and our Savior. See, it's not about religion. It's not about your good works, the laboring religious works. It's not about what church or denomination or organization you belong to. It's not about any of these things. It's about a personal relationship with a true living God. He's real. And with Jesus Christ, His Son, who died for us because He loved us so much. He did not want mankind to spend hell in eternity, but to be reconciled to the Father. Hell is for the unbeliever. You know, Hebrews 9.27 says, It is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. You know, people who deny there's a God, who insist and persist in living in sin and rejecting His Son, they will one day, when they die, be cast into well, I say be cast into hell they're sending themselves to hell actually one day they will stand before God and Jesus Christ before the great white throne judgment they will give account to a holy God and a savior who loved them and died for them not just for their sins will they give an account but because they rejected God's son as their savior heaven is for the believer this is what Jesus says about those who have accepted him and put their faith and trust in him and his death on the cross. John 14, 1 through 4, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also, where I go you know, and the way you know. There's six references in that verse right there to heaven. He said, in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive to myself that where I am, there you may be also, and where I go, you know, and the way you know. And the second point is about the way you know. Jesus Christ is the only way. To heaven and to God the Father. He's the only way. There is no other way. Uh, and our wonderful Savior said in uh, John 14, 6, He said, I'm the way, I'm the truth, and I'm the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. You know, no one comes to the Father, He said, except through me. You know, the day Jesus was crucified and hung on that cross and they dug that hole to, to set that cross in. When he hung there on that cross, he was hanging between heaven and hell. He was hanging between God and heaven. He was hanging uh, and, and lost humanity here on the earth. You see, the Bible says that Jesus Christ is the mediator between God and man. There's no one else. There's no other mediator, not a religion or church. N no one. There's no other mediator. Not even, not even Mary's or uh, Jesus's earthly mother, Mary. No one is. Only Jesus Christ. He's the one who died for your sins and for mine. Who hung there, paying the penalty for our sins. And when he took his last breath, he said, "It is finished." The work of the cross, his death on the cross, what he came to do to restore mankind to the Father was finished right there on the cross. He said, I'm the way. You can't get to the Father except through me, the Lord said. This is what this ministry is all about. God's love and grace extended to lost humanity, demonstrated through the death of God's Son, Jesus Christ, on the cross. And it's for the building up and the edification 
of God's people. It's God wanting to minister to the hearts of people, so many hurting people in the world, hurting because of sin and because so many other things in their lives. Before I close this, I would like to give the opportunity to anyone watching here right now, if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, maybe He's been dealing with your heart, maybe He is now. I would like to lead you into a simple prayer, and it's not the prayer that saves you. It's when it's prayed from your heart to the Lord, and to lead you in that uh, prayer and give you that opportunity to ask Jesus Christ into your heart. And if you would like to do that now, whoever you are, wherever you are, just pray this after me from your heart and pray it in faith. Dear God in heaven, I come to you in the name of your son, Jesus. I know that I'm a sinner. I believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for my sins. And I'm asking you, dear God, to forgive me right now today, to come into my heart and into my life, to be my Lord and my Savior. And I choose today to accept you, to accept your Son. And I thank you right now. Your, your word says that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And I'm calling on you now. And I thank you for saving my soul. Oh, listen, if you ask Jesus in your heart, I want you to know the angels in heaven right now rejoicing over a sinner who just got saved. Jesus loves you. I'm so glad you could join me today. Uh, I would love to know that uh, if God's done something in your heart and life today, if you've accepted him, the announcer at the end of the program will give you some contact information. I would love to hear from you. And until we meet again, thank you again for uh, joining me today on this program. And, and I hope you join me again. And, and we'll just see what the Lord has to speak to us. And thank you again. And God bless you. Till we meet again. Bye. Thank you for joining us today on His Healing Wings with Barbara Gyro. Comments or questions? Write or email us at His Healing Wings. 13406 Highway 416 in Rugon, Louisiana, 70760. Or email his healing wings at AOL.com. We are a viewer supported ministry. Your generous support will help keep us on the air. Also, be sure to check us out on Facebook and YouTube for more videos and information. Until next time, God bless and see you soon.